Good morning. morning. And welcome to our time of worship together, whether you're on live stream or here in church. And a warm welcome if this is your first time with us. And we begin with him, Christ is Alive. name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil, and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed, and we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you on our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty Father, you have given your only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification. Grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness that we may always serve you in pureness of living and truth through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of their Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4. Now the whole group of those who believed were one of heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. This is the word of the Lord. the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. It was evening on the first day of the week 
and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and put my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. speak in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we're a week on from celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It has been noted that it was the Orthodox Church that identified the egg as a symbol of the resurrection. Just as Jesus rose from the tomb, the egg symbolised new life emerging from the eggshell. But over time, this celebration is demonstrated in the multitude of chocolate eggs that we now have. But as we munch on our eggs, the events following the resurrection demand our attention. On the evening of the first day of the week, the disciples were mobilised by fear and were locked away in the house. But why were they locked in fear? because they had just witnessed someone whom they loved to be viciously and illegally attacked. There was no reason why the Jewish authorities of that day would not seek to do the same to them who followed Jesus. When we fear, we feel threatened. We feel we're in danger, we are vulnerable. Physically, our metabolism and bodily functions change, causing us to take flight or to hide or to freeze to prevent a traumatic event, even becoming breathless. The disciples still did not know the truth of what had happened, and yes, immediately after the resurrection, they are locked down in fear. This was their reality. What is your reality of Christ? What is your reality of your daily life? During this catastrophe, Jesus stands with them and showing his hands and his side, he says to them, peace be with you. He was reassuring them. It was a sacred moment as they were face to face with Christ. This was real. In their breathlessness, he breathed the Holy Spirit upon them saying, receive. 
And we have the invitation to receive peace that Jesus gives, the Holy Spirit. In their breathlessness, he breathes the Holy Spirit upon them, saying, Receive. But how could Jesus do this? He's being tortured by his enemies, and the moment he's free from the tomb, he doesn't run off into the mountains or seek revenge or lock himself away so no one can find him. No, he's with his disciples, his followers. But he knows what it's like to be frightened, to be vulnerable, to be desperate. When we let go of our self-sufficiency and dare to allow help, we will enter into the trust that we can be a people of hope for a broken world. We all crave for a deep sense of belonging, for intimacy, for communion. But Veronica, as she goes to soothe Jesus' wounds, is struck with a sense of loss as Jesus is pulled away. He's stripped, nailed to a cross, dies and is placed in a tomb. The passion that Jesus goes through connects with each of our own experiences of life. It is because he has gone through these things he finds resilience to be the light of the world, to go to his beloved disciples, reveals his true self and says to them, peace be with you, it's okay, I'm here, it's me. And with all the tenderness one can imagine, he shows Thomas his hands inside and he invites him, touch me, do not doubt. Our own experiences of vulnerability are gifts for us to allow others to connect with us as we allow them to see who we really are in our vulnerabilities and fears. But so often we shut people out, we lock down and isolate ourselves. And so it is sometimes when we approach each other to share the peace. Sharing the peace is about being with being with as we share the peace. As we share the peace, who might be the unrecognised bearer of the presence of Christ? It is a holy and sacred moment where the Jesus in you connects with the Jesus in the other. It is a holy and sacred moment where the Jesus in you connects with the Jesus in the other. It's not a time, really, to engage in a distracting conversation about anything. It's a sacred moment where we capture the reality of being of one heart and soul in Christ, belonging together. So this morning, in the moment we share the peace, we dwell together in unity. Jesus cannot be followed in isolation. As disciples, we are part of the body of Christ, one body but many parts, and Christ is the head. And so this morning we're going to spend a bit more time to share the peace actively with one another. To see the Christ in the other. The disciples had the physical contact with Jesus. And they went where they were sent, preaching the gospel. Baptising believers and healing for wholeness and well-being. And the world changed. God wants an inner conviction of the whole person that changes how we think, changes our attitudes, changes our outlook on life, changes our breathing. This is God's grace we need to actively receive. So what is your reality today? Are parts of you locked down in fear or suffering? Jesus promised the disciples he would not leave them orphaned and he kept his word. Jesus' appearance changed everything. He said to Thomas, Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. The disciples got it. Here was truly the resurrection of Christ. This is the reality in which we can live. Amen.
Let us declare our faith in the risen Christ. Let us join our prayers with those of our Saviour Christ, seeking the Father's blessing and the gifts of the Spirit. Our faith in the risen Christ is bound to affect the way we live. Knowing that the risen Christ is here among us, let us pray in his name for the church and for the world. Father, we pray for your blessing on every group of Christians worshipping today all over the world. And we pray for all who doubt your truth. We pray that our hearts may be set ablaze with love and that we may walk as children of light. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Father, we pray for all the areas of your world which are torn apart by hatred and violence, famine, disease or religious differences. We pray for an end to war and a deeper commitment to peace. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we pray for those who face family rejection if they become Christians, and for all families divided by beliefs or persecuted for their faith. We pray for the children of our church that they may grow up strong in the faith with good role models to guide them. We pray for our uniformed groups and for Halcyon House, Woodlands Care Home, and Formby Manor Care Home. And we ask that you bless the residents of Birch Green, Oakfield Drive, and St. Peter's Close. Lord, in your mercy. <coughs> Father, we pray for those who wake up to the prospect of another day filled with pain. For those who long for someone to spend time with them, enjoying their company. And we pray for sight that notices needs. We pray for our sick. Diane, Felicity, Glyn, Hilary, Margaret, Peter, Rod, Stephen, Susan, Theo, and those in hospital and our parishioners who are housebound or living in care homes. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Father, we pray for those who mourn and we pray for those they love and miss, commending all who have died to the everlasting arms of the God of love, in whom there is life in all its fullness. We pray for the recently departed, Keith Mowat, Francis Giltrap, Nicholas Hawkins, David Bostock, Paul Corkhill, and those whose anniversary of death falls at this time. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Father, with joy in our hearts, we thank you for the new life open to us through Jesus, our Redeemer. Merciful Father, So we're going to give a bit of time to sharing the peace, as Christ shared the peace. 
And I guess COVID threw something in, didn't it? We stopped touching, we stopped shaking hands. Well, you feel free how you would like to share the peace. If you've got hand gel in your pockets, get it out of your pockets if it's going to help you share the peace. Or face to face, we can look at one another <coughs> to share that peace and to see Christ in one another. So Jesus says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. If you love me, rejoice because I'm going to the Father. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Can I just pop by? That's lovely. Thank you. Peace be with 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 you. of all and source of our joy receive our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving keep us in the love of Christ and as we break bread together may we be one with Christ in faith and hope and love now and forever 
the Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. And now we give you thanks, because in his victory over the grave, a new age has dawned. Your Son's resurrection empowered his disciples, and your Spirit's fire enlivens your church. Christ is the King of glory, who has overcome the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. holy indeed the source of all holiness grant that by the power of your holy spirit and according to your holy will these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our lord jesus christ who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take eat this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Therefore, loving God, recalling now Christ's death and resurrection, we ask you to accept this, our sacrifice of praise. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and our celebration, that we may be fed with the body and blood of your Son and be filled with your life and goodness. Strengthen us to do your work and to be your body in the world. Unite us in Christ and give us your peace. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honour and glory now and forever. Amen. Believing the promises of God, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Thank you. 
you're welcome to come forward and receive communion. If you just want a blessing, if you just put your arm across the front of you, we would know that. If you've got special dietary needs, let us know. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died and lives for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. We thank you, Father, that you have fed us in this sacrament. Lord God, our Father, through our Saviour Jesus Christ, you have assured your children of eternal life and in baptism have made us one with him. Deliver us from the death of sin and raise us to new life in your love, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We sing our final hymn, We Have a Gospel to Proclaim. with you. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. <laughs>